Can you hear me? Now I can. All right, very good. Nice. Yeah, Discord's always doing that thing where it just, like, takes a second to hear you. Yeah, I had your Twitch open, too, so I hear, like, yo, 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 it's, like, like echoing and shit, but mm. we're good. I see. All right, and how's it going, man? Not too bad. How you doing? I'm chilling. I'm having a pretty good day so far. Got a good night's sleep last night, so going to a local later. Oh, yeah, that's good. What local is it? Uh, Verdugo. Verdugo, okay, yeah. Yeah, just the weekly chill local. Nice. But, um, all right, so what are we going to be going over today? It's been a while since we talked, I think. Yeah, um, so I, how do I say um, I guess maybe you I, could do like an intro. I forget sometimes. Whenever I know somebody, I'm like, yeah, everybody knows them. But like, do it, just go a quick intro. Just say like where you're from, tag, uh, oh, yeah. how long you've been so, playing, uh, goals for the game. Yeah, so uh, I'm Bills, uh, Marth player from uh, Albany, New York, which is a few hours north of the city. Been playing since like the end of 2014 ish. And, uh, you know, I'm always just looking to get better, man. Like, I don't enter a ton of tournaments, but, you know, I'm always just trying to be like the you know, beat the next level of player up. Um, but yeah, so like, I was trying to think what matchup would be best to go over. And um, I figured like, why not Fox? Cause you know, super common character, of course. And you know, there's always stuff to work on in the matchup. Mm -hmm. Like a couple of things I was thinking about are like, uh, when, like when I fight against like better Foxes, I kind of find that I'm just kind of like throwing out hit boxes in neutral, just kind of like hoping they run into them. And, you know, as you fight better players, it's not working. And mm -hmm. then I also find I kind of struggle against, like, uh, more defensive-oriented foxes. So, like, you know, if they're more prone to, like, go to the platform or whatever. So mm -hmm. I was trying to find somebody who, like, had that kind of play style, like, get some games in. And I didn't really find someone, but, hey, we got Zuppy to play some games. So I figure that's, uh, you know, next best thing. Really good fox. Oh, so these are games with Zuppy? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um... Wait, so Zuppy's tag on net play is six hands? I did not know uh, that. I, I probably switches it or something. Okay. All right, I'll pull up the screen share. Okay. Um, yeah, do you want to just hop into it, or what do you want to do? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, cool. I'll just watch for a second. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, approaching. The I'm just, I just already like, I just, I'm just like not a big fan of uh, like this wave dash, but it's not a huge, okay. it's not a huge deal. I just, <clears throat> it's just like super duper passive, and I feel like a lot of times you don't really need to, like, you already kind of like, like, why not just like, I don't know, drop a fair and dash back here or something, you know? I don't know. I just, the openings are always just weird for me when people, like, they're like, all right, we're starting the match, we're on completely even footing, so um, I'll take a well, defensive. Well, that is a big thing, especially and like, traditional fighters. And then you're like, all right, I will take a defensive position under the side platform. And it's like, no, I mean, that's, like, it's good to fight under the side platform, but I feel like coming off the platform here is just, like, not a bad spot to, like, try to get a hit in, but not a big deal. Okay. Okay. gonna watch for a second got it okay <laughs> I 
So you haven't happened to watch any of my, like, Fox versus Marth lessons, have you? Uh, I have. Um, it's been a bit, but that's why, like, I had seen a bunch of your lessons, and, like, I liked them. I thought you were good at, like, picking out specific situations, kind of, like, breaking them down and stuff, so. Mm -hmm. But it's been a bit. Okay, did, uh, so I actually did a lesson with Zuppy on this matchup, where we kind of, like, went over his whole game plan, and we'll go over a lot of similar stuff, probably, from the Marth end in this, uh, lesson but like i do think it would be useful to like watch that video okay and uh see how it looks from like the fox end at least like the because it's basically like zuppy is playing the plan or like zuppy plays the plan that we pretty much went over in that lesson so okay yeah i'll definitely check that out okay so a lot of the reasons why you're getting hit in the game in this game are like over commitments uh especially like forward movements so the main thing that fox wants to do against marth is get in really close right so that's like so i call that like the tether have you heard me talk about that before yeah I, now that you're saying that i, I okay. have heard you talk about that so yeah. it's basically the idea that when fox gets close enough to marth maybe within like a character length or two then like um marth sort of loses the mix-up like you're just forced it's like a forced scramble situation and you basically just have to like make a choice and then fox makes a choice but he's fox so uh it's a lot tougher on you and so and then when fox is at super duper long range um neither character can really interact and uh fox gets his lasers but then marth gains space and then he can't laser anymore so the long range is sort of stale maybe and then the close range is marth disadvantage so both of those ranges are kind of like like one is even i guess but fox can laser you so it's not a huge thing and then one is just literally losing so the range marth wants is like that mid range um it's sort of the range that like a lot of foxes who aren't that good at the matchup will play and it it's basically the the type of fox that you can dash attack. <clears throat> um, yeah. Like, there's that sort of, like, dash attack range. And you want them, basically, to be forced to play at dash attack range as much as possible. Uh, the longer you can get fox to stay in that middle range, the like, the longer you have to sort of... Like, you were kind of saying that thing where you feel like you're sort of waiting for him to run into the hit. Yeah. Um, the middle range is nice because you can basically do a thing where you're like, I'm either going to wait for you to run into my hit, or I'm going to use an unreactable attack. And so, it, like, Marth isn't that good at approaching, like, which you've probably noticed because you keep getting hit for approaching, but, yeah. like when you're at that nice little middle range it's kind of like you don't really need to approach because you're sort of close enough to like instantly threaten fox so the like yeah so basically the more you can maintain that range the better just because it makes all of your mix-ups stronger so um let's see the range would be probably around like this you kind of want to maintain this sort of range if Fox gets closer than this range, like around here, that's not really good. You sort of want to try to hit him for getting into this range. And then um, if he goes out of that range, it's sort of your job to sort of get closer into that middle range again. Like this is like a very rangey based matchup. And from the Fox end, it's the exact opposite. So from the Fox end, I always say, you're allowed to play really far, but a lot of times Marth will close the distance and you want to get in close and the middle range for fox is necessary because obviously to get close you have to cross the middle range but the goal as fox is to stay in the middle range as little as possible like you're kind of in the long range and then you get into the middle range and then you, what your your goal is is you don't really want to stay there and give marth his winning mix-ups for a long time you sort of want to find an opportunity quickly to either push in really hard or back off and that's what I tell all the Fox all the Fox players. So you should know from the Marth end that that's what they're looking for. And so, um, yeah. So the goal is to maintain that range a little bit. I think this Nair was good to punish his jump. Like, when he's in the air, obviously the range doesn't exist and 
this is kind of why this middle range is so valuable is like because if he jumps at this range you have a, like a chance to punish him like if you had just happened to like do a different aerial or whatever you probably would have hit him this nair is fine um and then yeah this grab is looks like you probably could have gotten it no see hmm I guess, like, this grab is, like, the reason you spaced this far away is because you don't want him to back air you um, or, like, drift further to the right and drill you. So you have to space around it, but then you can't get the grab. And that's just, I don't know, this looks more like a... Hmm. This looks kind of unrelated to the matchup and maybe more like how you handle, like, sharking in general. Um, okay. A lot of times it's important to make distinctions between things that you can for sure punish and things that like you can't really be sure you can punish and so this looked like a situation where you're like not really sure if you could punish it or not and a lot of times in these situations especially as Marth you can just do like another dash dance and you'll get like a spot dodge or something like that just because um, like it is an advantageous position like you are frame positive even if you can't get the grab so a lot of okay, times so you, would, you would like dash dance forward start dash dance yeah forward. and like so just like an example like for falco because falco is slower he doesn't really have a good dash dance grab a lot of times when fox does these like ambiguous full hops where you really want to punish it but he could just drift into you and hit you the the goal as falco is to sort of punish the landing so you sort of want to create like a pressure situation on the landing rather than like try to immediately hit the landing okay um okay yeah i want to go into the more spacing stuff so this is a lot of what i'm talking about with like the short range like if fox gets to this range you are sort of just like put into mix-up mode and you can win these but and sometimes marth does but a lot of times fox will just be too fast and literally get something like this where like you both make a mix-up choice and then Fox just literally recovers and is able to hit you again before your move is over. Or, like, before yeah. you're able to move. And so that's why this little, like, tether range is really bad. And so as soon as Fox is in this range, you... Like, okay, so if he's in really close, feel free to do, like, a mix-up, whatever. But if you have a chance, just try to get away back to the mid-range. Get out of there. Okay. Like, that's your goal. Like, not to really go for, like, these, like, shield grab, like, reversal type things. Um, it'll work against some, like, worse foxes, but you really just want to, like, get out of there. Okay. Should be the top priority every time. Because the fox's goal is don't let Marth get out of there. He's just trying to, like, pin you down and keep you there. And so if you kind of stay there and fight it out, you're giving the fox what he wants. Okay, yeah. So... Okay, so right here... So this dash back you did was really good right here. So this was really good. You dashed away. And this is sort of that... Um... So let me think of the best way to describe it. Basically, this just isn't playing to the plan enough. Um, like the sort of mid-range plan. It's like you outspace the Nair but you sort of want to like force an approach afterward like it, it almost feels like you feel like because you like dodged the nair or like dodged his dare was it a nair or dare i think it was a nair like because you dodged it you feel like you like almost deserve like an opening and it causes you to do this like dash in into like a nair thing and this is basically just like a gamble and from the Marth end, you do have to do some gambles against Fox, but you want to feel more like the house than, like, the guy at the casino. Um, Marth is... I've described it a little bit before, where Marth is sort of like a security system, where Fox or Marth sort of sets up his moves as, like, here are these systems that I use to prevent Fox from getting in on me, and then it's Fox's job to sort of look at those patterns and sort of try to figure out a way past them. And so when you do these like forward jump nares after like a whiff from Fox's end, you're sort of like 
you hear a loud noise outside, and so you run outside to check, and he just sneaks inside and locks the door. <laughs> like, that's kind of the equivalent of, like, you're overcommitting from, like, your role as, like, the security system. Okay. So, like, the dashback was good because you're like, all right, Fox, your approach just doesn't work. I dashed back. And then it's like, your goal should be, and if you try to attack me again, that will also fail. So because his attack again succeeds, that was like kind of an issue on your end. Like you need to be preparing to punish him trying to get into the tether range, trying to get close to you. You don't really want to try to like, you chased me, now I chase you. That doesn't super work against Fox really well. Um, okay. Some so matchups, like some matchups, you might be able to get away with that, but Fox is f like maybe you can get away with it against the characters who are like a little bit less likely to like dash jump at you, <laughs> but like Fox is just really likely to jump at you. So like your goal just needs to be to neutralize whatever Fox does. You shouldn't really be looking for like I'm gonna nair him because he whiffed type thing. And yeah, so you just get like tethered on where you're just right in the space and you get hit a bunch. Okay. Um, <coughs> uh, counter's bad. <laughs> like, yeah, I go to it a lot. <laughs> yeah, I understand the why you want to counter here. And like when I see this, my brain is like, oh yeah, should probably counter here. <laughs> like I can feel like the Marth easy, like the lazy Marth brain wanting to counter here. Um, the truth is that, like, after he drops right here, you can just grab edge and then do drop invincible side B, or drop invincible fair, and he's dead, or drop double jump back air, like, you can drop right here and double jump back air this. Okay. Or just, like, falling fair. Um, the others, that's, like, one set of options, is to grab ledge right here, um, I'm not even sure if weak fair knocks it down yet. Like you might just have a guaranteed kill with weak fair here. Um, I'm not. I don't know the knockdown. Do you know the knockdown for weak fair? I, on I don't. To be honest. Yeah, I, I feel like it doesn't knock down here. But um, and then your secondary option is to go for like a late fair or dare at edge here. Like just like I do like short hop and then wall of fair because it'll go below the ledge and actually hit this a lot of times. Um, and the yeah. down air will too. He can tech it, which is the downside. Well, and yeah, that's the thing. He was teching like a lot of stuff in some of the previous games. So I was like, eh, like I don't know, like I, if I can't get out there to hit him, what am I gonna do? So I was kind of going more on stage. Well, it's... he can tech this too. True. You know, True. so he it's like it, but you're right. at least if you go for like the fair, he can't really punish you. He's gonna take some damage. You get to execution test the tech side B or whatever. Yeah. Like, it has a little bit more versatility than this, which is just, like, if he up -bees badly and doesn't tech, yeah, I get another <laughs> edge guard. And if he does any of those things right, I get punished. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Got edge guarded. Happens. Yeah, 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 look at this. This is what you want. You want this range. This nice, beautiful range right here where you're holding it and you're like, you can't come in, you can't come in. and But then you jump right, you, you give him the tether for free. That's the strange part for me because you're like, it's like you're doing your job so well that you feel like you must be doing it wrong. Because it's like, you're doing a great job here. This is completely fine. Notice that he is vulnerable to, like, unreactable dash forward grab or dash attack, like, during this point. Like, um, mostly, he's a little further for the grab. That ha The grab is more, like, the dash and grab happens when you're playing a better fox who's, like, playing right at the inner edge of the range. Like, they're playing it a little fast and loose, and then you can kind of get the grab. Like, against Cody, the grab works, but a lot of people will play a little bit further back. Um, it gives them less opportunities to get in, but puts them in a little bit less danger. So you just, so yeah, this walling is really good, and you should just keep doing it. You don't need to always be aerialing, because he's kind of far here. You can be dash dancing a little bit and throwing out the aerials, but like, what you were just doing was perfect. Also, um, I'll get into it in a second. I'm just talking about this in general, 
um, like the spacing in general, this could be anywhere on the stage. When Fox is in the corner, your biggest priority is Empty Hop Fair. Um, empty Hop Fair is like an undefeatable, like, insane move against Fox in the corner. From like, this range or uh, um, like the same range? You can use this range to approach into it. So it's basically like you do this wall and you do this wall and then you jump up like this or, or you kind of like where you jumped right here um, and you just drift in. So basically do like, don't do dash forward jump, just do like neutral jump, drift in from like right here would be great. Like you just jump up and you just neutral right, drift in right. or you, you see neutral jump and then you drift in and you late fair and you will literally just like own 99% of foxes. <laughs> okay. Um, I labbed this out with Cody a lot a couple years ago, and there's only one answer that Fox can actually do, which is go to ledge and then ledge dash. And uh, that doesn't even win the situation. That just stalemates the situation. So if Fox is ever in the corner and you get your slight approaching empty hop, you just win. <laughs> like, the uh, the fox will need to know to go to ledge and ledge dash, and there are probably five foxes in the world that will go to ledge and ledge dash there, and so you'll just keep getting openings over and over. And so, the empty hop fair is a really big priority in this matchup in general, but I wanted to go over the range stuff more, because it's like, more, it's really important. And then, like, the empty hop fair is just, like, the definitive move in the corner. So, that's, I just wanted to go over that. And we could oh, yeah. look up a VOD or something of it in a bit. Um, okay, so let's see what happens after that. So, yeah. Like, it, when Fox is cornered, you either maintain the range or you short hop late fair. When Fox is not cornered, you pretty much just maintain the range. Got it. The late fares are still good, but a lot less when he has stage to dash back on. Okay, one sec. I got distracted again. How did you get hit by this? So you get... Approaching down tilt. Yeah, you get hit by it because you do the bad approaching down tilt. And then you... Okay, you just kind of get, like, pressured. I see. Okay, and then, yeah, you get hit by that. Get her back up. Yeah, and then, like, this is just a tough spot. Marth in the corner is, is rough, and he just kind of, like, reads you here. Um, yeah, and there's not a lot you can do in the corner. Like, you can you can keep doing the walls. Like, like you can sort of maintain the range. Uh, sort of how it works in the corner is... So, remember, you love the mid-range. You want to, like hold on to the mid-range forever. And the nice thing for Fox, when Marth is in the corner, is that Marth can't go backwards. So Fox knows that if he decides to move in, he is guaranteed to create uh, the tether. So when you're in mid-range mid in the middle of the stage, when Fox moves in, he has to like confirm whether it tethered or not. Um, so he, because you might just dash back and like kind of recreate the middle range. And if he treats it like a tether and he just, a lot of, a lot of people do that. They're like, oh, I ran in on Marth, so I need to, I get to attack. And it's like, no, the Marth moved back. So now your attack is the same as if you attacked immediately without moving in. <laughs> and, yeah. but in the corner, you can't move back. So the sort of situation that arises is basically, um, you want to maintain the mid range. But when Fox decides to close the mid-range, you just have to close your eyes and go past him. So the idea is like, Fox is here, you're here, you're like wall, and he's like waiting, you're like wall, and he's waiting, and then you do wall, and you feel like he's gonna come in right now, just wall, and just dash, like, Rah! just go. I just kinda gotta read his approach then. You have, that's the idea, is like, kind of how you would normally read his approach by like dashing back to maintain a mid-range you sort of have to read his approach to get past him and then just 
just get out of there. Like, there's so many times where somebody has Zane in the corner, and they're, like, pressuring, and he's, like, waiting, and pressuring, waiting. Right. And then he's just, like, and he just, like, goes, and he'll just, like, run across, like, the whole stage. And it's just, like, oh, there there he goes. Like, you missed him. Um, and it's sort of either that or, like, full hop wave land and getting away on the platforms, which is, like, not great, but also you're already kind of not great because you're over here. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's kind of your main escape is just like, like head down, run, um, and just choose a weird timing. And usually Fox won't immediately rush in, and if he does, you'll st you'll just catch him with like up tilt or the nair or whatever like you're gonna use to catch him approaching. So you do have those. Um, and if Fox moves back too far, I like to do Waveland cancel on the platform, like you do the Waveland into Teeter right here. And then I'll just do drop fair and like fade back a little bit, and it kind of defends. If Fo that's if Fox like gives you too much space, because sometimes what'll happen is you're like here, and you're walling at the mid range, and he's and he's chilling here, and he's gonna go in. But then what he wants is he's he's like reading you running out of the corner, and so he'll like move back a little bit to like counter it, and then that's when you can go up here and then wall him out, and now you're kind of here, and he's here, and that's pretty much middle stage like as yeah. long as you can dash back marth is kind of in center it's only when he's really like over here and he can't really dash back that he starts to struggle <clears throat> but yeah his options are really limited in the corner and you you just sort of have to like try to avoid that position as much as you can uh let's see what happened here uh, okay, this is like a new, this is just neutral B here. Like right here. Fair, neutral B. Neutral B? Yeah. Okay. Neutral B, and then you just recover. And you could have just fared again. It's just, it like the fair just tippered. But a lot of times when the, like the fair tipper is ambiguous, you can like neutral B. Maybe, I don't know, this is like, I would need to test it. I don't want to be like wrong. Oh, it yeah, do that. It feels yeah, like neutral B would hit here, but maybe not. One more time, let me look at it. Is there a better option that I'm missing? Yeah, I do not know. I actually... I guess I could have just done the pivot tipper, but I haven't been... I got a new controller recently. It doesn't pivot super well, so... Pivot yeah, tipper where? Like, uh, after the up throw. Oh, yeah, you're right. I didn't really think about that. Dude, does neutral be hit here? Now I'm, like, so perplexed <laughs> you whether, I'm, yeah. whether I'm misinforming you or not. Okay, maybe I'm misinforming you. I, I get the you. idea, though. I okay, get I the might idea. be misinforming yeah. you on this particular situation. Because that will never pop them up. Yeah, yeah. I, I see what you're but, like, though. just be aware of the neutral B. I'm looking yeah. at it more, I'm like, am I just wrong? Like, am I just bad? No, like, it's, a, it's a decent ender sometimes. I know, I know what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, I was looking for an edge cancel there. Kind mm -hmm. of goofed. Yeah, Marth off the edge is pretty rough. Shielding and high percents is okay, I guess. Yeah, maybe I should just go on right to ledge there in between. I've been kind of mixing in, like, doing some light shields and stuff like that between stocks. Yeah. It's a... Yeah, like, rather than, like, doing that thing. Yeah. 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 No, I think it, it was definitely just, like, your actions and the invincibility, like, just already put you in this really rough spot. So, I, I do understand why you shielded there. I almost right here like right here i think the best option probably would have been to roll in okay like instead of holding the shield to try to like get hit by the move is like to see the move coming and roll there probably the best i just like to i just think like at high percent when you're against a character that can kill you out of a grab you usually don't want to like stay in shield because they're just going to be like ready like they're just ready like they just know that you're scared of them and they're, they, you're going to end up, like, shielding because you don't want to get jab up smashed or whatever. Which is why he gets this tomahawk in the first place. Like, he already just knows that you're, like, scared. Yeah. So might as well move. Okay. Missed. You just got super reversaled out of your combo. Yeah. Feels bad, man. Mm-hmm. Okay. No. Yeah, I missed it. 
And yeah, so this nair, notice how this nair is just like not in the plan. Like, um. The approaching nair. The approaching yeah. nair. And notice the look that if you did the in place nair, you would have gotten him. <laughs> oh, man. Right here. The nair would have hit him. Yeah, I missed the dash again. Okay, yeah, all this kind of makes sense. You're just sort of in like a bad spot at this point. Okay. Nice. Okay, let me see, point this out. See the walling at that nice range, and then you catch him coming in. Yep. Should probably re-grab right there. Mm-hmm. Okay, nice roll, nice. And yeah, this uh, nair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <Sam> went for it. <laughs> I knew I was gonna do it right when I slept position. Yeah, just that's just lazy. It's just lazy. Gotta get out there, aerial them. Yeah, it's like it, it's like just you know there is like a armada shine uncle punch training stuff you know. Yeah. You, you could just set it up and and then try to practice it because like. Marth definitely can kill Fox from that position. Uh, he yeah, can't kill Fox from every up B position, but this one is definitely killable. Nice, the wall in place. Going to the platform, okay. Oh. Okay. Uh, let's go to the second one. Alright, let's see. Okay, I do not understand this movement at all. Yeah, I have that passive tendency there. It's funny that you do the wave dash back like every time, like right there. <laughs> like drop wave line back, there we go. It's not a huge deal here because he just goes to the platform, like it doesn't change anything. But this is a little weird, like you definitely could have just gotten out of the way here. It doesn't really make sense, but happens. Okay, you get the reversal. Um, I think you're just poking from too far away, yeah. Get out a bit, okay. Yeah, it's just too far from the edge. And yeah, hey look, this is that thing again. This is that thing. Where he yeah, whiffs, patterns. he whiffs, and then you're like, now it's my turn to approach. Yeah, and it's same, like, nah, same you, exact situation. if you played Pretty Fox much. 2, maybe it'd be your turn to approach, but nah, it's not. Okay. And this is sort of, okay, so this is like a sort of, like, this is like a real situation that, that happens a lot, is like, Fox is kind of at this middle range here, but he's at like the very inner tip of the range, like kind of uh, right here. He's kind of just barely at the range, and your Nair is just a tad bit late um, to keep him at the range. So, right here if you had just done this instant nair right here this would have worked but then because you you spent a bunch of extra frame dashing and a few frames shielding you ended up in this spot where you were too late and so he gets under the first hit of the nair and then this is like a fox win like if i'm watching um the fox's vod here like if i was watching zuffy's vod i would say oh this is this is really good like you figured out a way to you sort of tricked the Marth in neutral, and you were able to get close enough to get the tether. Like, so basically it's like, this was at the very tip of the range where it's like, very barely winning for Fox. And if you had done it a little earlier or a little bit further back, it wouldn't have been. But this is how Fox wins his situations correctly, is getting under you like that. Okay, yeah, it's the CC. Okay. Um... These blind grabs are not my favorite like this. It's just you being like, oh, he did an aerial, I can grab that. It's like, nah, it's Fox, you cannot. He's too fast. I... Yeah, scrubby counter. It's like a scrubby counter. I understand the logic behind it. <laughs> so the thing with this is the counter would be great here, 
if uh, air dodge didn't exist. <laughs> but like you can air dodge to the plat and you can air dodge to the ground. So if you thought he was going to hit you right here, just air dodge diagonally like right here. You'll be invincible and then you land like right here. It's just like a slightly better version of the counter pretty much. Unless you really wanted that reversal. <laughs> Okay, there's no reason to dash in here. You're just, you, like, you're just giving him the tether. Like, right here, you should never be dashing in. If you're dashing in here, it should be to go, like, here. It should be, like, a cross-up dash. Um, and you might have been able to, in some cases, go underneath it. Not this one. But the dash in when he's at tether range is just a bad... Or not even a tether range, when he's slightly further than tether range. Like right, like right here is just a bad idea because remember his goal is to get into tether range and he kind of knows that like he can get closer at this spot so by running forward you're just giving him everything that he could possibly want okay and your combo game is definitely holding you back a lot okay, uh, yeah. you haven't hit like a single combo <laughs> like that yeah like if this is happening you're just not going to be able to beat good foxes because like think about like the thing that makes like like i don't know like lol marth you know like marth just beats fox type thing like yeah, oh any fox can, can lose to like a random marth type thing that's because of their punishes you know so like that is clearly the thing that makes marth hard for fox is that he hits really hard so if you really want to be good at this matchup, the number one thing above everything, and this has been proven yeah, beyond a shadow of a doubt by the army of incredibly, like, <laughs> dumb Marth players. <laughs> like, there's just so many Mars that, like, don't think at all. Like, you can tell that they're not paying attention. Like, they never make choices in response to their opponent's choices. They just sort of run through their algorithms on their own. And they just beat a lot of Fox players. <laughs> And it's just because of the punish. So, like, the punish is clearly, like, the heaviest boulder as part of, like, the beating fox plan. And so, and no matter how much I explain the ranges, or we go over, like, how to trick fox in neutral, or how to outrange him, if you're not, like, if fox is comboing you harder than you are comboing fox, you will just never win. Like... That is just how it is. You need to have, like, from the fox end, the idea is my neutral needs to be really dominant and my punish needs to be good enough. And from the Marth end, it's my neutral needs to be good enough and my punish needs to be far and away better than his. Because they have those different strengths. So, like, literally, Fox is like, I don't know, like, he can, like, nair and nair again, and it's not reactable. Like, the character is just dumb with how fast he is, you know? And so, like, you're never going to win 100% of the time in neutral. But because you have this big sword, and he, you outrange him by a lot, you can win enough. Uh, especially when you get really good at playing those ranges and making it hard for Fox to, like, force his stuff in. Because when you're at that mid-range... Fox knows that he can't, like, short hop aerial, he can't full hop aerial. You'll just dash back it and kill him. So you can establish sort of like this, like, I'm pretty good in neutral. It's kind of hard to beat me in neutral. And then you just hit mad hard, and that's how you become, like, the Fox Slayer. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's a good way to think about it. Yeah. Like you need to be good enough in neutral. Because, like, dude, the amount of times that Fox should be dead is just, like... Okay, we're gonna go back. We're gonna go all the way back to the beginning. And we're gonna count it. The number of like, big openings. All right, one. It, imagine if this is Zane, there's like an 80% chance that this is now four to three. <laughs> like, that's terrifying. But it's just literally like, you're pretty much dead. You might make it back. There's a pretty good chance you're dead. So that's one potential stock. Um, okay. And we'll look for the second one. Okay. Ignore this, but that was your first one. Um, and so, you know, in like a top level game, let's say your neutral was the exact same level, you know, and uh, 
you just whiff those grabs the exact same way. This would be an even game. Because you killed, you gimped Fox, and then he came back, and he kind of foxed your whole stock and zero deaths you. And yeah. so they would be an even game, rather than being a full stock behind. Um, and that's kind of how Marth works. It's like, man, Fox sort of won neutral four times that stock and killed me. But I won it once, and I killed Fox, so we're even. And that's why the matchup is pretty close. And maybe Marth favored. Yeah, I was going to say, just out of curiosity, who do you think... Uh... Um, not that I, I don't really get too much into that stuff. To well, be it's kind it's of enough, it's thought. kind of like always like a like the reason that these matchups will never be solved is because Fox beats every character in Tass, and so like your opinion on the matchup is kind of dependent on like what you imagine peak human Fox to be like, and then some people just imagine peak human Fox as like a Tass bot, and other people see like peak human fox as like missing wavelands on the platform one out of ten times you know so like there's because like i've talked to like smart mains and they're like no nah, like i mean clearly like the fox will mess up and i'll get a hit and it's just like i think that's kind of ignorant like the fox isn't necessarily gonna mess up and give it to you but they're just they just spent the last decade of their lives letting fox give it to them so they're just like brain dead um <laughs> but um it's like and then from the fox end, it's like, you do you want to believe that you can do it? And then Marth SDIs out of an up air and just zero deaths you? And you're like, hmm. <laughs> so, like, I think in current meta, it's close to even. I think Marth probably wins at a practical level. But it kind of depends on how cracked the foxes can get. Um, if fox gets cracked to, like an absurd level then maybe we would start thinking that fox like wins uh but really like you know if fox just starts multi-shining everything and like i don't know just going nuts like every single up b gets punished by like a perfect ledge dash punish you know like like every time you up b high fox does task ledge dash into jc shine and you just get shine if you like up b high it's like oh <laughs> you know like there's like there's a lot of stuff that Fox can do where he's just too fast and just kind of runs Marth over. But I, I do think that no matter how Tass or good Fox gets, he can't really make it better than even because Marth has a lot of like true 50-50 type neutral situations. Okay. So I think it's roughly even or Marth favor. Like, yeah, I, I could see that, to be honest. That's I feel kind of like bad. as Marth gets trickier... There's just a lot of weight. Like, there's just a lot of spots as Fox against Zane where you're like, huh, I couldn't really do anything there. But then, like, it looks like Cody has a kind of advantage, but a lot of that is just due to Cody learning. It's the security system versus hacker type thing, where, like, Cody knows Zane's security system inside and out and backwards and upside down. And so he's able to navigate through it in a way that makes Fox look kind of favorable. And he's lost the last two times against Kadoran. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like... I don't know. It's, it, it almost seems like Marth wins unless the fox knows everything the Marth is going to do. Because the fox has more options. So it gets complicated. Yeah. But that's sort of my opinion on it. I think, I think probably Marth wins on a practical level. But we'll have to kind of wait and find out how far fox can get pushed. Yeah, let's see how many times they... Don't kill this guy. Two. Okay, yeah, that was the second opening. Oh, wait, no. How did he get past 35? Okay. Okay, it was just that. Gonna ignore it. And... Okay, number two. Now you just get that. Up throw forward there. It's like, imagine if this was Marth's best punish on Fox. This matchup would be 100-0. <laughs> <laughs> like it would no, be like I, impossible. I hear you. Yeah, I gotta get him off stage. Okay, so that's three. That's three stocks. That this down air was kind of off the same one. So I'll just instead of this part of the third one. No, that was kind of four, because you could have gotten this text chase. We'll round up. We'll round up. Yeah. Okay. And on the fifth one, you kill him. I'm just gonna go through and count these. Honestly, I think it'll be beneficial to just see. Okay, there's one. Miss tech chase. There's two. Okay, actually good slide off by him, not really your fault.
Okay, being in the corner is bad. There's just so little you can actually do there as Marth. Okay, there's three. Okay, so he gets the slide off again. I got him. I, like, so yes, like right there. Should I be mixing it up more? Like what, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, so the number one thing you need to be doing here is the late up air. You're doing the early up air, so you're giving him the early, the easy slide off. Do you know how that works? Uh, not really. So uh, Okay, it's so it's something that's randomly way too complicated, but it's not complicated on your end because you're not the person DIing it, so you can chill out. <laughs> <laughs> I like that laugh. <laughs> yeah, so basically, um, in like the last few frames of Fox's tech roll, he, like, think of his, just think of it, don't think about his whole body, think about like his root position, you know? Just imagine him as like a point, okay? Okay. So when he's doing the normal tech roll, he's like right here on the edge of the platform. And so he just holds C stick down and control stick left. And so when you hit him with this up air, um, he will just get this ASDI uh, like right here. So he just he's still right here. And so he gets hit right there. And he just gets to ASDI off the plat down and off the platform and he gets this, right? So, but what happens is, in the last few frames of tech roll, his root position, or whatever, I'm not going to get too into the technical details, what really matters here is that in the last few frames of the tech roll, he's actually slightly off the platform. So, if you do the up air just before Fox comes out of hit stun, he actually can't C-stick down, control stick off, and slide off. So what does and he have to do then? So it's kind of it. That's so okay. So that's the first thing is that he can't do the basic slide off, which is pretty huge because that's what people are gonna do most of the time. So the only way to get the real slide off on the late frames of roll is he has to hold C stick, like C stick down, right? But mm -hmm. then slightly in, kind of like a like a notch angle. Some people like Cody even has notches on his C stick. Several top foxes do. Um, I don't, I probably should, but I have a lot more to work on than this slide off the eye, I feel like. So um, basically they do slight in and down, or like all the way down and slight in on the C stick and then off on the control stick and they can get it. But the problem, if you think about it, is that they're not getting as much ASDI down because it's not straight down. There's some horizontal component to it. And the more that they miss the notch and the more sideways they go, like the less ASDI down they kind of get, you know? And so it gets way too complicated and there's like- I was gonna say, I don't, I don't wanna like spend too much- No, time no, no, no. and I'm not, saying I question. don't even fully get it. There's just okay, a okay. lot of weird, <laughs> because the percent changes based on the C stick angle and sometimes, oh, you, and sometimes <laughs> you have to change the C stick angle and the control stick angle to slightly different spots based on your percent and stuff like that. And, but thankfully, that's not your job. Your job is yeah. just do just the late up there. Just late up there. Yeah. <laughs> you got it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, you just do the late up there and you watch them struggle with their C stick notches. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> so, yeah. So, basically, that's the thing. Uh, you're just up airing too early there and it's making his life a lot easier. Okay. And you can just practice this by literally setting up a, uh, a replay. Like, just go to, into training mode and set up a replay where Fox does tech roll and then does the ASDI down and uh, control stick sideways at, like, 40, 50, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then just, ha like, hit him and have him tech roll and then just practice the late up air and you'll be able to tell, like, when the up air hits late enough that he can't get the ASDI off. And you just want to just want to do that pretty much every time. Okay. And if you watch Zane's stuff, he does it every time. It's just an advancement that came over. It's just so funny with Melee because it's like, for years, it was just like, things. up air just works. And then it was like, oh, well, we figured out, like, it was just so simple. It was up air works. And then people like, we figured a slide out slide off. It's still simple. Slide off works, up air doesn't. And then it's like, 
Now we look deeper into it, and it's actually a combination of multiple C-stick and control stick angles changing heavily based on percent and the exact frame, and you're like, oh no, <laughs> like, yeah, like, 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 where does all that depth, play. where so does all the depth come from? Like, all of a sudden, there's just a ton of depth in a spot that was simple for years, and then simple again on the other side. So it's just yeah. kind of funny. So good, dude. Yeah, no, Melee is just hype. Um, okay. So I'm just, just going to look at your punish here because I feel like this is overwhelmingly giving you a tough time. I wish I did a lesson with Kadoran before, but it never it, he didn't want it uploaded. But it's like a whole Come lesson. On. Yeah, it's unfortunate. It's a whole... You could maybe message him if you wanted because he might have it saved. Um, I don't know. I don't know if, that's, if he does that or not. Uh, but basically I did a lesson with him a long time ago and the entire lesson was on doing short hop late fair. Because short hop late fair is like, basically, um, you can dash it, away after right. You can't punish it. Yeah, I'm not sure you know this, but the frame data on Marth fair is exactly the same as Fox Nair. <laughs> I did not know that. So, if Fox can Nair your shield and do something afterward, Marth can fair your shield and do something. Like the fair is actually that good. And if you fair outside of, like, grab range, imagine if Fox had a Nair as long as you're fair. The shield pressure is ridiculous. <laughs> like, Martha Fair is just not okay. Like, he literally just lands stupid fast, hits the shield, gets away. Like, also, just... A disclaimer in case anybody looks at it. I don't know if it's exactly, like, if it stales the exact same and everything. I don't know if it's exactly the same, but it's basically the same thing. <laughs> it has, like, the same landing lag, the same, like, freaking ability to, like, avoid the stuff they do and stuff like that. But basically, just think of it as, like, you have a fox nair. Like, you have a crazy shield pressure tool, and don't be like, ah, oh, are they going to grab me out of this? Like, no, you have, like, basically, like, a spacey shield pressure here with more range. So the late fair is like low key, just like this entire matchup. Once you learn how to do the the middle range thing, okay. So like once you get the middle range thing down, and you're working on the punish, and you get that punish down, and you come back in like three months, we would basically just spend a whole lesson on the fair. So like you can just keep the fair in mind that like the late fair, empty hop late fair is sort of the crux of the matchup past the range stuff. If you, you know, don't want another lesson and you want to just keep getting better. That's kind of the next step for you after that. Got it. Yeah, because look at this. This is crazy. You just fair, and then you're just like, bam. And look at this. He's not actionable till like, now. And you're just like, dude, like, I'm chilling. Like, you can just literally get away. Even though you were right in his face. Yeah, Marth Fair is just totally broken as shield pressure. Okay. Okay. Okay, what do you do out of this? Does he die? Yeah, down tilting from too far away. Yeah, 20 down tilts. Um, something you can do here if you want it to be a little bit further range is you can do like the wave dash cancel. Like just wave dash and teeter here and then down tilt. It's pretty good. Like, okay. if you just wave dash teeter cancel down tilted, he's definitely dead here. Just an option. Okay, you get this grab. Is he dead? Nope. Just gets away. Up air, is he dead? Nope. And then he hits you, and you're like, oh, 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 he's yeah. hitting me so many times. Oh. Yeah, dude. And it's like, that's not how it's supposed to be. You're the Marth. <laughs> and yeah, this light shield here is just not super the play. Just because, like, he did it before where he just pushes you to ledge and then jabs you, you know, and he tried to do it again. Okay. It's just... Um, obviously, invincibility is really annoying and rough to deal with, but I do think, in general, platforms are better. Okay. Like, like light shielding on platforms is, like, a good place to start. Okay. I, I tried to roll there. I actually remember that. I was trying to do shield C6 to the left. I see. Okay, let's do... We have one more video to go over. And I mostly want to look at your punish. Because, like, I started by going over that range stuff. Because I could tell you weren't really doing that right. But, like, 
I actually, I, pre I actually feel like you should probably grind punish first. Honestly, like keep the range stuff in mind and grind punish, cause like your punish is like just super, super hurting you. Like just not hitting hard enough. Like not being able to get this tech chase is. Uh, is like fatal like it's literally gonna make you bad forever if you can't hit this tech chase okay, so yeah. you just you just need to sit in the uncle punch or 20xx whatever and just grind like you gotta be able to punish fox if you're gonna win the matchup and tech chasing fox is like super easy what you can do is put him at like a percent and then just like forward throw tech chase and then down throw tech chase and stuff like that um because it's it's, I don't know. You just literally need to be able to hit this. This is so important for, for, to be able to hit. Okay, you get that one. Oh, no. You went for the yeah. fair here. It, was, it wasn't timed correctly. Um, let's see. Get the grab. Okay. <laughs> and this is, the, this is the type of combo that, like... It's like you've never seen a combo before, but you're you you have a lot of natural talent. That's like this vibe, where you're just like you're kind of stringing it together, but it has nothing to do with like the type of combos that Marth players do. So like this is definitely like an up air, right? Like should definitely be up air in here. The fair is awkward. Uh, if he di's out, he might slide this off. So just up air. Um, and then you catch the double jump with this up air, and then you fair here, and then you react to the... You don't even react, because this is like oh, a read, and you just it. read, like, forward smash. It's like, dude, like, that's not, like, the type of punish that you want, you know? This is the yeah. type of punish that you get drunk at 3 a.m., and you laugh. Like, because, like, you're like, man, I hit the punish every time. You know, people do that joke, like, man, Marth can throw any move out in a row and kill. That's yeah, kind of what you did. <laughs> so the more formulaic punish game, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, formulaic, and you want it to feel like it just happens. It's kind of like you don't really think about, like, putting the food in your mouth when you're eating. <laughs> you just see the food, and you're like, go, body, eat it. And then your body, like, forks it. And you put it in your mouth, and you chew it, and you swallow it. You never had to really put in any effort, you know? Yeah, it's got to be second nature. That's how the combo game has to be. Like, it has to be, like, you get the grab, and inside, you're just like, yes! Like, I did it. I did it. And then you look back, and Fox is dead. <laughs> like, it has to be like that. You, there shouldn't be any point in your combo where you're thinking. It should all be, like, the ball is up in the air. I hold out my glove, and I catch it. You shouldn't be like really deeply calculating at all. If you have to take a second to think about it, um, too late. it's too late. Exactly, because you need to be moving. Like as soon as as soon as you get the hit, you need to be moving towards what you think will happen, and then as soon as you can confirm what you think will happen, you need to react to it. So any sort of extra thinking just gets in the way. And what it does is it ends up ruining your combo tree in general. Because you're like, I see this DI, I up air. But then like you see this DI and you're like, should I fair there? Should I up air? Fair, up air. All right, I guess I'll up air. But now the up air is late. And so now whatever follow-up you're getting after the up air is like entirely contingent on this up air that was mad late. And so like you don't get to experience the repetitive situations that you need for like appropriate training and sort of internalizing it because every combo is completely off the dome in the moment made up from random moves so you're you're just literally like not giving yourself enough practice okay um yeah we're pretty much at an hour but i think we we caught a few critical issues already, so... Yeah, Do you have good. any other questions or thoughts? No, man, I think, like, you know, I think you hit a lot of good points. Like, I kind of liked, like, you know, going over the, the neutral ranges and stuff like that. And, like, yeah, like, I, I would definitely agree, like, you know, watching over these games. Like, I, I'm not hitting hard enough, for sure. Like, it's mm -hmm. right about that. 
Yeah, so like I think if player. um if you fix the combo game, um, and I tell people this a lot with like combo stuff is that like a lot of times neutral game gets extra confusing if you're not hitting your punishes because people start disrespecting your openings like fox will just literally run in like he's not even going to stop in Third, the middle yeah. range for a second and let you like hold him out of the close range and keep him in the middle range like maybe that situation like won't even occur because he'll just run across the stage and throw out a move because he knows that if you do randomly get a hit it won't really end not badly for that. him and so, like, by having the threat of the zero death and having the consistent punishes, things start lining up a little bit more where, like, now, because you're hitting hard, neutral it's now has... Effect. Yeah, neutral now has the appropriate risk-reward values. And so it's kind of like that whole correct training thing, like the combos, is, like, once your combos are good, your training in neutral will be more worthwhile because the risk rewards that exist are going to be consistent among top players rather than like the risk rewards are good are like my risk reward is great versus someone with an equal punish and then totally different against zuppy who's hitting way harder whereas yeah. if, if your punish is already sort of maxed out the risk reward is already sort of tuned to the top and then people who are below the top are just extra easy. Whereas right now, it's kind of tuned towards, like, the middle. And people at the top are, like, hitting harder, and the risk-reward is all skewed. And it's just not going to give you, like, good practice. Definitely. Um, okay. It was good uh, talking yeah. to you again, man. I hope we yeah, get to absolutely. hang out again at some point. It was fun. Yeah, are you coming through uh, Shine or anything like that? Maybe. I don't you know, think come, so. Uh, come through, come through. Dude, come I hate... Through. I hate flying to the East Coast. <laughs> this is so far coast. away. But yeah, yeah, I hear you, dude. Yeah, I, I, I'll we'll, see you around at some point. Yeah, we'll see. But uh, anyway, I hope you have a good one. Yeah, let me know. Um, what's it called? Let me know how to pay you, man. But um, besides that. Yeah, no, I'll I'll send you the info. But sounds good, man. I'll talk to you later. Hope this helps. Let me know if Absolutely. anything extra comes up. You have any clips or anything? Feel free to send it. Gotcha. All right, peace out, dude. All right, peace.